everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I've been married to a covert narcissist for almost 20 years. I'm separated from him now and what I do with this channel is I use my real life experiences to get information out there to people about what narcissism really is, what it looks like, what it does to you and what it does to your family. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of the more difficult realities you'll have to face as you recover from narcissistic abuse. And that is euphoric recall. It's also known as memory bias. It's when you remember past experiences in a positive light while ignoring the negative experiences. Narcissistic abuse is traumatizing and confusing. You have been or are with a deranged person don't know this initially though you know initially you believe that you are with this wonderful person you believe you are with a kind generous person because they're love bombing you narcissists have no conscience they do not care about anybody else there's no empathy it's very difficult verging on impossible for somebody who is a kind generous loving person to wrap their brain around the fact that there really are evil people in the world you know it's one thing to believe that there are evil people in the world it's another thing to believe and know that you are with an evil person because you think you know the narcissist initially they've love bombed you which really means they've lied and manipulated you and you believe them you think you know this person you think that they are or were a good person so when the real them comes out it's almost impossible for you to wrap your brain around that how can that be you know this person you have been lied to and it's very difficult to understand that i mean how can you you think you know somebody if you are with somebody that is depraved, that is severely mentally ill, and that's how a narcissist is, they are sick people. And the more narcissistic the person is, the worse it is. So you're with someone so evil, but you're a good person. So you don't, you can't relate to this. It's like if you were trying to speak to somebody who spoke a different language, it doesn't matter how much you love this person, how much you want to understand them, how desperate you are to hear what they have to say. You cannot, it would be impossible. It, you could spend years with this person. If you don't know the language, you are never going to understand them. That's how it is with a narcissist. And you have been so cruelly manipulated. So your brain seeks to comfort you. That's what the brain does. You know, your brain is wired to avoid suffering and seek comfort. So as you're going through the worst of the abuse, or you're trying to get over the abuse, your brain keeps going back and you start thinking about the good things and you're misremembering. You're believing, well, you know what? Maybe they weren't so bad. They used to be such a great person. Or I remember we took this great trip or when our, you know, our son was born, that was such a great day. But those were all lies. So going through narcissistic abuse, going through the recovery is such an ordeal. It's so unfair. It's so cruel that you have been so viciously manipulated. You know, not only have you been forced to live a lie, you have no idea, but you're forced to live this lie. You're loving basically Satan. You have no clue that this person is abusing you. Then you find out and now you have to go through this huge recovery process because your brain has been affected. Being in a relationship with a narcissist is really like an addiction because they keep you hooked with intermittent reinforcement. You know, addiction affects, here's I'm going to put on my little scientist cap here. Addiction affects the hippocampus. That is the part of the brain that's responsible for memory formation, storage, and retrieval. With addiction, so this could be, you know, alcoholism, drug addiction, or narcissism, narcissistic addiction, there are changes in the way a person processes content. It's like an optical illusion. You know, you think things are one way, but they're not. So during euphoric recall, you're remembering events differently, incorrectly. So if you're remembering an event differently if you're remembering something incorrectly you are susceptible to making a poor decision because you're basing your decision on something that isn't real so as you go back to thinking about things that happened in your relationship 
naturally you're thinking of the good things. It's like when somebody dies, you only hear about the good things about the person. You know, nobody sits there and talks about how horrible the person was. Everybody who dies is a saint. That's how it is with narcissistic abuse as you're, you know, basically the person is dead and you're thinking of them in a saintly way. You're going to end up gaslighting yourself. Maybe you could have been different. Maybe you could have been better. And other people are going to do the same thing. If you tell somebody who hasn't experienced narcissistic abuse what you've gone through, they're not going to believe you because they're going to think you're exaggerating. Oh, you know, you're just hurt or, you know, this or that. Of course, if you're in a relationship, it takes two to tango. I'm sure you weren't perfect in the relationship either. You're going to end up with double the trauma. Nobody can understand this. This is actually why I have this channel because I have gone through this alone and it's traumatizing. You need people to help you. You are at a point in your life where you need the most support. Think about people who are really drug addicts or are really alcoholics. They get through it with support. You know, they'll go to AA, they'll have a counselor, or they'll have whatever, a sponsor. When you're going through narcissistic abuse, you're going through it cold turkey and you're very susceptible to the memory bias, to the euphoric recall. It's very difficult. So what I want people to understand is that you are not alone. You need to overcome your nature. It kind of reminds me, if anyone's ever seen the movie, The African Queen, there's a part in the movie where... There's a well-to-do woman and she needs to take this boat. She needs a man to drive her in a boat somewhere. And he, she goes to the boat and he's laying you know, drunk with all these alcohol bottles around him. And he's making excuses saying that, you know, it's just human nature to have a, some, a drink every once in a while. And her quote is that nature is what we are put in this world to rise above. So if we bring that to narcissistic abuse, you know, narcissistic abuse is what we are here to rise above. We cannot let a narcissist keep us in bondage to them. Can't be a slave to a narcissist. They don't deserve us. A narcissist is always going to be a narcissist. We can move on and be bigger and better. This is just a bump in the road. If we let ourselves sit in the misery, if we're like the guy in the movie, just surrounded by the alcohol bottles, or in our case, surrounded by narcissistic abuse, we're not going to be able to ever enjoy our life. You are not promised tomorrow. So you need to hold on to today and do the best that you can. And I am not trying to oversimplify this like, all right, now that you know, just move forward. That's going to be a very difficult, if not impossible thing to do. But if you can understand the reality, if you can understand that your brain is trying to protect you. So when you know that you have been abused by a narcissist, you need to understand that reality and try and overcome what your brain is doing. It's so unfair because you've been so abused by a narcissist. And then even the recovery process isn't easy. But once you get through the recovery process, you are free. And the narcissist can go and just go to hell, hopefully, is what they're going to end up doing, probably. We can move on. We can be better. So there's a process to this. You have to understand that, you know, how the human brain works. Human brain likes to solve problems. That's why people like to do puzzles or crossword puzzles or think about how you feel if you've lost something and then you find it, you feel this relief. So your brain is trying to do that when it comes to the narcissistic abuse, is trying to solve it, is trying to make it better. It's like a puzzle and your brain wants to fix it. So it's thinking back to the good times. Well, maybe it wasn't that bad or I, I could have done this better. Or I did get mad at him that time. You need to just push that out of the way. Once you know Hold on to what is really going on. Understand you are with somebody who has abused you and there's no future with somebody who's abused you. It doesn't matter. You know, I still deal with that today. Even now, I've known that my husband is a narcissist since August of 2019. Even now, today, there is a part of me that would like him to acknowledge what he's done. I would like to have that closure. I'd like to have the validation. A part of my recovery, part of me overcoming the narcissistic abuse is recognizing that as a narcissist, he is incapable of doing it, right? It would be like if you had a little infant, you have a newborn infant, it is not going to get up and start running around the house. You don't, you know, you don't expect your infant to do that, but you know, you have to accept the realities of the stage that this person is in. A little infant is unable to walk. A narcissist is unable to feel. 
You though can fail, you can get better. So it seems a lot of times when you're in a relationship with a narcissist that they have it so much better than you. And in some ways during the recovery process they do because they're numb to it all. But the reality is they're going to be numb to everything always. They can't be any better. They're an infant stuck as an infant. You know, they're a person that can never mature. You can. So the first step is understanding what is happening so that you can overcome that. Then there are some other things that you can do that will really help you. What you need to do is understand what's going on and then what is very helpful and it's painful to do this, but it's helpful in the long run. Get a journal and write down the bad things a narcissist has done. That way, when you are experiencing the euphoric recall, when you're thinking about that great trip you took, you can also look back and think about, oh, look, when he cheated on me here, oh, he maxed out the credit cards here. He yelled at me in front of other people here. He embarrassed me here. You know, he didn't get me a Christmas present, whatever it is. It keeps you grounded. It brings the reality back because your brain will just go crazy thinking about all the good times and you completely ignore the bad times. Remember, your brain is trying to protect you. So keep a journal. It really helps. And remember, euphoric recall is not your friend. Don't let yourself live in the love bombing stage. Understand what narcissism is. Keep yourself in reality, understand, remember the bad times too. Your brain isn't going to do it for you. So you need to write it down. Just keep this journal, put it somewhere, put it on your phone, put it somewhere where you can see this. So when you're sitting there upset or dreaming about the past or believing, maybe it wasn't that bad. I know I can fix this. It's going to be all right. Maybe if we started over, you know, he's told me he's sorry. A narcissist never means it. If you are truly with a narcissist, it can't work out. It shouldn't work out. You don't deserve to be with somebody that has so little respect for you that they think that all you're worth is a few love bombs here and there and then they can abuse you 90% of the time. That's not the life that you want. So you need to tell yourself this. So write it down. Write it down and review it. Review it every night if you have to certainly when you're thinking about the good times because it was all fake. You don't deserve to be in a fake relationship. That's not a life for you. It's like I said earlier in the video, you are not promised tomorrow. You have today grasp hold of that. You can make your life better. You can make your children's lives better. Take your life back. I hope this video helped. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday about all things related to narcissism. So assuming all goes well, I will see you when, I mean, see you Friday. God bless you all.